Hey everybody, it's Ryan. Welcome back to How Farms Work. We are standing here out at my place. We are running cows through the chute. So it's come time to preg check our cows. We're doing something new this year, or at least I am. And uh, in the past, we've had the vet come out and check the cows to see which ones are bred, which to be honest, is a lot more simpler and, and cheaper. But uh, due to convenience, I wanted to try something new so that if I have the wonder whether or not X, Y, or Z cows are pregnant, I can run them through and check myself. So Hannah and I have the cows all penned in and uh, we are taking blood draws out of the cows. And uh, it's pretty simple. You just hold their tail up and you stick a needle in at the base of the tail. You uh, stick the vacuum tube on to the needle and it creates a vacuum that will suck blood out. And you send it into the lab and you should have the results back within a couple weeks. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and take a blood draw on number 46 first to show you guys how it's done. They give you two stickers of each number. One goes on the paper and then you write the animal's name and then one goes on the tube and then you also write which number goes with the tube and then the animal tube number here animal ID and then the sticker here so there's no way you can mess it up okay so we swap out needles for every new cow here's our collection tubes you can see the ones that we've already drawn here we've got blood in them we've got a healthy amount in there to make sure that they have enough to do the tests so we've got our three important pieces we've got our cup We've got our double-sided needle. The pink side will go into the cup, and that is what's gonna pierce the vacuum tube, and the other side is gonna go into the cow's tail. We're aiming for a vein that goes right down the middle of the tail. So you don't wanna go too deep because you'll hit bone. If you feel bone, you need to pull the needle back out, and you should get, if you've hit the, hit the vein, you should get blood. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the Pink side first, toss that, insert it into the cup. Looks like a little rubber piece, but there's just a needle hidden underneath it. And then we've got the face of our, we're gonna draw blood. Get the vial ready by putting it in like this. We aren't gonna puncture it until we get the needle into the tail. She's nice and clean, as close to the base of the tail as possible at a 90 degree upward angle. Once we feel like you've gone in far enough, she's settled down, you can go ahead and puncture the vial. There, I had to adjust it around a little bit, but you can see the vial filling up. Once we've got a good amount, we only need two cc's worth, we can go ahead and pull out the needle and the vacuum tube. So there we've got our blood. This is gonna get sent to a lab roughly 150 miles away, 200 miles away, and uh, we should have the results back within a couple weeks. Not as nice and not as immediate as having the vet do it, which personally is still my preferred way, and I'll probably still do that in the future, but this is a learning experience. Oh, honey. Here, right, right here. There you go. That one looks pretty 
shot, I would say. Sorry, honey. There. Brand new cow. Yep. Those RFID things are... Good idea. Mm -hmm. much squeezing happening there. I'm sorry, Betty, but you're probably going to move. Yeah, yeah. These are the ones that I bought in 2018. Table's not totally straight. Perfect. blood draw ever but it's working. At least you didn't have to get the other one. All right. I said three more and we'll be less than halfway. <laughs> I know that's not the same but Getting pretty darn good at this. Sam. Hannah sent out the blood samples and we had the results back the very next day, which actually blew me away because I was expecting it to be a couple weeks before we got the results. But I'd like to go over these with you guys to talk a little bit about my herd and things that I could do to improve, I think. 
let's just go through the list and talk about a few things that I noticed in the cows that aren't bred back. So out of the 62 cows that we had checked, 49 were pregnant. One of those I did not expect to be pregnant because she just had a calf this fall and she was only with the bull for probably two months, if that. And um, that brings us down to 12 that didn't breed back, which brings in our breed back percentage to just above 80%. Ideally, I would like that to be above 90%. Ideally is always 100%, but uh, over 90 is the goal. And what are a couple things that I could do to improve that percentage? So the reason that I'm breed checking my cows in the first place is so that I know which cows are actually producing a calf. I don't have very good records before three years ago when I started doing it every year. And I'm looking for any cows that aren't producing a calf year to year. So if any of the cows that came back is open this last check, I can go back and look at last year and say, okay, did she have a calf last year? Yes or no. If she did not have a calf, then that tells me, okay, she needs to go down the road because she's costing me money and she's not producing a calf for X, Y, or Z reason. Um, if she did have a calf last year, I could give her a second chance and try to improve other things, um, which I'll go over in a little bit. So one of the things that I had noticed when I started scrolling through my list here is that four of the cat or four of the animals that didn't breed were heifers. And what reason for that could it be? And the reason that I think is because I don't have a very good nutritional program in place for my herd, not really for my steers or my calves, and I'd like to improve that. So since four of my heifers didn't breed back out of 11, um, one thing I noticed that when I went out and, and a, we ran them through the chute, but when I go out there and, and look at them, they are on the small side. So those heifers aren't born, you know, much later than the rest of my calves. And what I think I need to get to doing is putting out creep feed in the summer months for the calves so that they have the nutrition there. It takes some of the stress off of the cow to produce milk. And what that'll do is the calf will grow faster. Um, when, they, when they come off in the fall, they should come off at 600 pounds. And the calves, as of a couple weeks ago, were averaging around 450. So there's a lot to improve there, uh, I think. So what I'm going to be doing is I would like to be getting my hay tested down here that I've got. And I'd like to start by attacking the nutritional problems that I may be experiencing with my herd. And uh, that way I can get my cows on a, uh, a program where I'm ensuring that they're getting everything that they need. That way that they're producing enough milk to hopefully increase the amount of calves that make it through the summer, um, reduces pasture loss. And what that'll do by making sure that my cattle have access to uh, mineral and plenty of feed is that it should help them uh, keep their body condition up so that they'll have a higher chance to breed come summer. So what I think I'm dealing with this year is that I had a lot of not so good feed last winter because we had uh, bailed a lot of the moisture and well we had bailed around 25 percent moisture in a lot of the stuff and the bales had started to rot in some places i feel that there was a lot of things that i could do this year i feel like after i've had a little bit more experience with the wrapper um, i made sure that i put end caps on all the rows i can look at the feed that i have this year and say yes that is fantastic feed compared to what i had last year so I would like to get the stuff that I have now sampled. I would like to get them on a, a mineral program. And I would like to get the calves on creep feed in the summer months uh, to hopefully take some of the pressure off the cows to supply the nutrition for the calves. That, like I said, that'll increase the uh, body condition of the cows to hopefully get them to breed back because if the cows are experiencing nutritional deficiencies, it 
reduces the chances of them being able to, to breed until those deficiencies are resolved. And I think that may be what my herd needs is to make sure that they've got mineral uh, year round, really. Um, up until now, I've really just been giving them protein tubs whenever I feel that they need it. I feel like that's helped a lot. Uh, but at the same time, if I have quality feed out there like I do this year, I think that the protein tubs won't help as much and I actually need to get mineral out in front of them. So um, in a future video here, I'll be taking some hay samples and seeing what those come back in as um, I, I'm pretty confident they'll they'll be good. And then uh, hopefully that'll get my heifers growing sooner so that I'll have a higher percentage of my heifers being bred back as well. Because if you look at how many are open, out of those four heifers, those other ones, I have only one of them that was not breeding at all. She's three years old and hasn't been bred. She's had two, two chances, so that means that she's probably going down the road. But otherwise, the rest of these have had calves going out there and looking at them. You can kind of tell just by looking at them which ones aren't bred. And I, I'm thinking if I do have mineral out there year-round, um, that'll help resolve a lot of those issues. Um, mostly up until this point, uh, managing my herd, I haven't done a great job of, uh, to be honest. At least I don't feel I have. And I'm always looking to improve and increase management and improve my decisions that I'm making to help increase the, that, be, that breed back percentage because that is where our money is being made in our beef herd. And um, I'd like to start raising fats. Um, I'm actually looking at fattening out a few heifers this summer. And if you guys would be interested, leave, me a, leave a comment down in the comment section if you'd be interested in purchasing some of our beef because we just got in talks with farmer grade and uh, we're looking at possibly uh, sending a few fats down and being able to ship those out across the U.S. and maybe even farther. I'm not sure uh, exactly how far they ship, but uh, uh, let me know if that's something you'd be interested in, in the comments. I'll keep you guys posted on uh, the hay samples uh, as we go forward. Um, I need to talk to a nutritionist to see what they think my herd needs and um, hopefully once I get on top of this next year I'll see my breed back percentage go even higher but 80% um, I, I can't say that I'm, I'm not happy with it but it could always be higher I feel like there's things that I could do to improve that so um, we'll just kind of keep going at it and try to improve so Anyway, with that, thanks for watching this video, guys. Be sure to check out all of our other videos. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat, All How Farms Work. I hope you learned something from this. Uh, it was a learning experience for me, drawing blood out of the cows. And uh, it was actually pretty fun because we got to learn something new. That is something that we've never done before. So uh, anyway, I'll see you next time, guys.